It's Rav, welcome to the Everyday Investor TV show, the show that teaches you how to grow our money, uh, your money, my money. Uh, God blesses us with a job, but imagine a life where you could work a little less and money could make you money to be able to spend it, uh, your time with family, friends, engage in a purpose that's greater than yourself. That is what the Everyday Investor TV show is all about. Every week, I bring in an expert in their field, a different investment strategy so that we both can learn. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Coming up, we're speaking to Anil Walia, and he teaches us how we can buy investment properties in the USA. The US real estate system is quite open as against the Canadian system. So you need to uh, know various websites and various uh, places from where you can access the information. In addition to that, I have a power team. So my power team consists of a realtor, a property manager, a handyman, a contractor, a mortgage broker, insurance agent so all these people uh, you know they they help me hi terry lynn lego from canada's mortgage choice here did you know that you can access equity in your home by refinancing your property even if your mortgage term isn't up yet depending on what your mortgage says it might involve some penalties but what are you doing with that money on the other side of things are you using it for investment purposes have you been struggling with some higher interest credit card debt that it might make sense to access that equity that's what we do here at Canada's Mortgage Choices. We take into consideration your entire financial situation and create a strategy for you to create more wealth. And you could be sitting on a lot of wealth that you don't realize. Call us today at Canada's Mortgage Choice to do a free mortgage review for you. Hi, it's Darren Mitchell from Control & Compound. If you're a real estate investor or business owner, you know the cookie cutter approach to financial planning doesn't work for you. You've got to be in control of your money. You've got to save and store your money differently than other people. At Control & Compound, we are the wealth coaches for real estate investors and business owners. We show you how to save your money, grow your money tax-free, multiply your money tax-free, and spend it tax-free. To learn more, please check us out at controlandcompound.com forward slash everyday investor, where viewers of this show get a complimentary education session. Hey, it's Rav. A few years back, I learned about trading stock options by taking the Theta Trading course. My son, my friends, myself, all of us benefited immensely by applying their strategies, and I want you to have that same benefit by taking their course as well. I'm not receiving any monetary benefit whatsoever by telling you this. It's just that, as you know, I believe that knowledge mitigates risk. Visit their site to find out more. Hey, welcome back to Everyday Investor. Uh, we're talking to my good friend, Anil Walia. He's not just a good friend, he's like family. I call him uh, Uncle G, uh, Uncle, uh, because he's like my dad's brother. G is a sign of uh, respect. But uh, Anil, uh, thank you so, so much for being on the show with me. It's always a great privilege. Uh, I know you're uh, busy. Uh, but yet still enjoying um, your family and your friends. But whenever you can come on the show, it's, it's just such a treat for me. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dad, for inviting me for this show. Yes. I don't know uh, how long ago we met now. Um, you know, seems like forever I've known you. Um, but it's been, you know, less than 10 years. And, you know, I've watched you grow your portfolio in the United States. Uh, you have such an in interesting story, and I want the viewers to to uh, to hear it. Um, but how many properties um, do we have now in in the U.S. in Florida? And uh, when was your last closing of a property? Yeah, I have now 103 properties, and the last closing was in March uh, 28, 2023. Uh, two, 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 oh, so just just a few months ago was your last purchase. Yeah, just a month back, yeah. And you have 103 properties. Oh, that's right, 103 properties. Okay, and now I'm gonna ask you a question which nobody believes me when they hear the answer. And so I just wanna ask you again, of the 103 properties, how many of those properties did you see before you purchased? No, none of them. I bought all my properties online through internet. 
<laughs> you bought all 103 properties. And so, you know, correct me if, if, if I'm wrong here, but what you did is you came here to this country, you had uh, just a few hundred thousand dollars, I think, that you refinanced from a home, um, and you decided to do your research. And so you spent about $50,000, give or take, uh, over a period of uh, one to two years to research in all the different places in North America of where would be most prudent um, to and start, start investing in real estate. And you wanted it to all be kind of in one area. That made sense to you. Um, and you landed uh, originally um, just outside of Orlando in a place called uh, Kissimmee. Is that right? Uh, that is right. You know, in uh, 2009, I got my layoff uh, from the job, and then I started searching, and I took various mentorships, and I spent around two years and around $50,000 on the mentorships. Uh, then I took loan on my principal residence in Canada, uh, which was, uh, you know, around four fifty, but fifty I spent in the mentorships. So with 400000 I started... Uh, uh, investing and uh, as a result of my research and mentorship i concluded that orlando and orlando area is one of the best place to invest and what what was the year of your first purchase uh, first purchase was in january 20, 2012 2012 so it's been about 10 years 10 11 years now um, yeah it's about 11 years yeah. yes and the purchase price of the first property was how much First property was 180,000. 118? 180K. Yeah, 180K. Oh, 180,000. 180,000. That was a big house. It was a five bedroom house. I was not, uh, you know, uh, perfectly tuned to the investment properties at that time. So I wanted to buy big houses. So I started off with five bedrooms. Then I, you know, tuned myself to three bedroom, two washrooms. And so that's your niche. You're doing three bedroom, um, two washroom, detached homes. And what was the purchase price of this last property that you bought? Yeah, the last property uh, which I bought is for 220K. $220,000. And we'll look at the numbers on that one when we come back from the break. But uh, no, this is phenomenal. Now, when you, when you say you've never seen the property, it was online, um, you've also established a team though, right? You, you, um, last time we spoke, you were investing um, almost exclusively in the Orlando area, but then you had two or three properties, you moved a little bit over to Tampa. So are you still uh, focused on Tampa? Like where was the location of this last property? The last property is also in Tampa, it's in Spring Hill. Uh, because what I found originally, the properties were uh, you know, available at good price in Orlando. And with the uh, passage of time and the prices went up, so I had to move out from the greater Orlando area towards uh, Clearwater. So you have 103 properties. How many of those are on the Gulf side now? Uh, about 10. 10 properties. So you have 93 properties yeah. in the uh, Orlando area and 10 properties Orlando. in Tampa. Yeah, That's Tampa area. Okay, no, this, this is phenomenal. And, you know, um, you're never afraid of uh, competition, um, Anil. That's why I appreciate you. You're always helping people, teaching people. You were even doing some coaching, but I know it took a lot of time from you spending with your, uh, your beautiful wife and kids and grandkids. Um, that being said, are, are you still doing some coaching or not so much? Uh, actually, uh, the activity in the real estate was, uh, you know, a uh, little less uh, because... Uh, for the last two years, uh, due to COVID, the originally prices went down and then prices went too high. So there were not very many properties available. So uh, even my activity was, you know, a little subdued. Uh, I would say the last, uh, the you know, 100th property I bought was in April 2021. And then the 101st property I bought in August 2022. So almost one year and four months. And then I bought one in December and one in March. So now uh, things are looking up. So again, I would say that the, uh, the market is, you know, coming into the right place. Okay. So if anybody is interested, then, you know, if somebody is motivated enough to buy in the U.S., I can surely, you know, coach them. Okay. 
Yeah, no, no, no. People ask me all the time, and I always reference you, but I always say I'm not sure if he's coaching or not coaching, or you know. But you're always very generous with your uh, information for a phone call, anyway. So I uh, I appreciate that. Um, and I don't want you know people to think that you know there's some irresponsibility here that you know uh, Anil is home at night surfing the MLS and oh there's a nice property let me buy it no 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 you have an incredible system in place talk a little bit about your system when it comes to realtors contractors inspectors talk a little bit about what you've um, created because just because you haven't seen a property before you bought it you do go to Orlando Tampa to set up your systems and processes so talk a little bit about that yeah, you see, there is a uh, uh, the the U.S. real estate system is quite open as against uh, Canadian system. So you need to uh, know various websites and various uh, places from where you can access the information. In addition to that, I have a power team. So my power team consists of a realtor, a property manager, a handyman, a contractor, a mortgage broker, insurance agent. So all these people, uh, you know, they they help me, and I have you know spent uh, a lot of time in uh, screening them. Maybe this is the seventh uh, realtor who is working with me. So I had to, you know, uh, anyone not producing results, you have to throw him out. The handyman, I have I have changed, you know, ten handyman, uh, ten contractors, and uh, so banks also. Uh, originally I had only one lender, so now I have four or five lenders. So uh, with uh, passage of time, I have developed a good power team. So now it's very comfortable to operate from uh, Canada uh, without, uh, you know, visiting there. But once in a year, I do visit. So after I acquire the property and everything is stabilized, so I go and visit the new acquisitions once in a year. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, we call this, we, we, we call it sometimes passive investing, um, and it can be passive so long as you put in the active work. I mean, I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars you're generating monthly and, and you're, you know, the, the market value of these 103 properties I know is in the, in the, in the millions. Um, but um, it's not just spitting out like a bank machine. I mean, it is, but there is work behind it. I mean, you went through 10 handymen. You've gone through several realtors. You've gone through because it's your business and we can't, we got to make sure we're on top of our business. We can't just say, oh, okay, uh, you know, that guy will take care of it. And so I appreciate your shrewdness as a businessman. You can never tell spending time with you. We often go out uh, as our families go out together for lunch. And I appreciate uh, that. And you seem so laid back and so casual. Uh, but when it comes to business, uh, we have to be sharp. Talk a little bit about that. If you were, if there's, you know, uh, my son who's watching the show, uh, he's 22 years old. What would you say to that generation? What would you say to your grandchildren? I mean, I know they're a lot younger, but when they enter their late teens, early 20s, uh, Anil, um, being a foreigner coming to this country, what do you see that that these you know that people need help in? What are we not doing? Um, what do you like, and what do you see that we can improve on? Speaking to that generation. You see what happens uh, in the in the so-called schools and colleges, even in MBAs. Nobody teaches you uh, what actually happens in the actual practice. So nobody teaches you investment. And uh, so so what happens is uh, as to the youngsters, we have to get we have to teach them how to do how to get into investing, because the the wealth building the re real estate is the you know route to build wealth. So if a young child, we have to you know uh, make him. Uh, in, develop a habit of saving some money and then knowledge is very important so we have to teach him how to you know uh, select a property what are the factors which go into uh, selection of a property how the numbers work so once uh, we give him little bit of exposure and let him uh, you know at the age of 20 or you know 17 18 i mean there's no age limit 17 18 20 25 so depending on his comfort level, let him get into first property. So where he can, you know, he saves his down, down payment and uh, you help him uh, on the knowledge side. And uh, once, he's, once he experiences the cash flow, once he sees how the numbers work, then nothing's stopping him. 
so then you know child gets into the habit of you know looking for property and he knows how the investments work i think this is the right way to you know teach young children into uh, investing no and i appreciate that and you also have done it yourself and that's what i appreciate you know i don't want anyone if you're watching the show uh anil spent two years um researching taking different courses before he pulled the trigger on his first property we're talking to my uncle g anil walia uh don't go anywhere we'll go through some numbers when we come back everyday investor continues in a moment Hey there, it's Rachel Oliver, also known as the Cash Flow Queen. Join me, Rav, and five other investment experts as we teach you different proven strategies on how you can grow your money in any economy. See you at the Everyday Investor Summit. When it comes to compound interest, an infinite banking policy can let you compound like a snowball. I'll tell you what I mean. What most people do when they're saving money, it's like starting with a snowball. They start, they roll it, roll it, roll it. They're outside with the kids. They get the base of a snowman. And what do the kids do? They jump on it and smash it in the snowball. You got to start with a fresh one. Same when you save money. You save it, save it, save it. Just when you start getting some growth, people spend it. Well, picture if you could take a snowball and roll it for the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 years or more. That would be one big old snowball. Well, that's what uninterrupted compound interest is. Uninterrupted compound interest is what you get with a properly structured infinite banking policy. To learn more, check out controllingcompound.com forward slash everyday investor. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today. Canada's mortgage choice. Hello, everyone of Everyday Investor. It's Costas First Access Condos, and I got something special. Now, a little known fact is that Pickering has more applications for condos than any other pretty much area in the country. They have 75 condo tower applications and 42 are approved. That's right, 42 towers are coming. Now, I got a project that's gonna be first, and everybody knows that when you're first, that's when you make the most returns. Highmark Condos just launched in Pickering, around $1,100 a square foot, first of 42 towers. First access condos, don't be second. Hey, it's Rob, welcome back to Everyday Investor. Uh, super excited about my guest. Always love when Anil comes uh, on the show. I try to get him on the show, you know, a couple times a year at least because uh, I don't know about you, but every time I speak to him, I get inspired. Um, and, and again, because I love your, um, your mindset, your, your uh, spirituality, your family life, and your uh, business acumen, um, you know, because, you know, listen, it's not that hard to make money, but it is hard to have all things in place, to be great in relationships, to be aligned spiritually, and to create something for yourself um, and uh, create a legacy for your children and their children and so on and so forth. So again, thank you, uh, Neil. Um, what's the, the future? Um, are we continuing on this track? We're on 103. Uh, maybe next time uh, I see you, it's 110. Like, are you continuing to go down this path? Yeah, you know, I want to leave uh, this legacy for my children. So, and uh, real estate is, you know, with time, it gives you very nice returns. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it creates value for you. So I intend, uh, you know, keeping the portfolio. And uh, if any good, good property comes on the way, then we keep acquiring. Otherwise, uh, you know, I intend to maintain this. Yeah, the numbers have to work, you're saying. The numbers have to work. That's yeah. very important. Yes. So we just bought one in Tampa in March of uh, 23. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tampa, Tampa area, just a few months ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the true. purchase price on this one was? 220,000. 220,000. And this is your normal three bedroom, two washroom? 
Yeah, three bedroom, two washroom, 1400 square feet. And why is this, why do you like this? The three bedroom, two washroom? I mean, you don't just do it by accident. I know, you know, 99% of your properties is, is this. Detached, three bedroom, two washroom. Explain your thinking on that. Yeah, you see, this is uh, the, the right configuration which uh, is readily, uh, it, it's easy to sell this property and easy to rent this property. So these are, you know, uh, very hot uh, uh, stock and uh, you can never go wrong. Even if you decide to sell, it's not difficult to sell these properties. You want to liquidate your portfolio and if you want to rent, it, it, it rents fast. So that is one of the reasons that I go for this. And we are buying, uh, we're paying cash and then we're pulling money out, correct? That's true because you see, you see in uh, US, the Canadians are considered second class citizens. So uh, it, it's difficult to get the mortgage uh, upfront. So the best uh, procedure which I found is workable is you buy in cash and then get them refinanced. Okay. And so you, know, you see, another thing is in Canada, it's very difficult to buy 100 properties and get them refinanced because these Canadian banks are very conservative. In US, uh, that's a, you know, entrepreneurship uh, country. So uh, they have, the banks do give you loan on uh, more properties. Yeah. So what, what I hear you saying is in Canada, the more properties you have, the more, I mean, I don't want to say fearful, but I can't think of a, another word right now. Uh, the banks are more fearful. They think there's more risk the more properties you have. In America, the more properties you have, the more successful they see you and they want to give you more. They just want you to pay cash, set it all up, and then you can pull money out. Absolutely. Right? Okay, so we bought this property for 220 uh, cash. Yes. Uh, what was our renovation? What did we have to, did we just do some lipstick to this? Yeah, yeah, $10,000. <laughs> I love you. $10,000. So we, we uh, are in for $230, and then you went to the bank because, again, you have relationships uh, with the bank. I mean, you tenanted it out, then you went to the bank, and how much were you able to pull out? Yeah, the appraised value came to 275 k 275 So already now, I mean, this is incredible, Anil. If you wanted to flip this, and I know you never flip, but if you wanted to, you bought something for 230 and you could sell it for 275 in a matter of how long? Uh, one month, one and a half month. In one month. We, you yeah. know, we probably uh, put a for sale sign on the lawn. Maybe we use a realtor. But, you know, you're making after fees 30 grand, 40 grand in one month if we flip this. Yeah, right. that's true. Right? Okay, so yeah. the new value is 275. What was the yeah. uh, the mortgage? How much did we get to take away? Uh, the, I could take out 70%, 70% of 275K, which comes to uh, 192,000. 192, so you're left with how much? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, plus, you know, uh, I'm left with 38,000 in the uh, down, uh, down payment. My I was in for 230K, and 192 I got back, so I'm left with 38K down payment in the property. Yes, so you have a property that you have $38,000 in right now. Again, for those of you watching, he bought for a certain amount, he put in $10,000, the bank um, uh, um, gave a new value, he was able to take out 70%, um, and then that left him with the mortgage of uh, thirty-eight thousand dollars. The rather money inside was thirty-eight thousand dollars. So the rental on this is what? Yeah. No. Uh, plus, I put, uh, there was four thousand dollar closing costs. So total down payment was kind of forty-two k. Forty-two k. Okay. Look at you, such an honest guy. We we need to be always. Okay. So we we have forty-two thousand dollars there, and what is your rental income? Yeah. The, the rent is $2,000 per month. $2,000 per month? $2,000 per month. Okay, and then after we pay our fees, and what, what, what are we paying out from the 2000 The expenses are insurance expense, property tax, property management, and the mortgage payment. So after we pay all this payment, we get $431 per month. Okay, so your, 
monthly your 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 cash flow, if you will. Yeah. Is how much? Four hundred and thirty-one dollars. Four three one. Four three one. And if I tie, I don't know if you have a calculator there, but if I times yeah. that by twelve months, what is that? Yeah. Five one seven two. Five one seven two. Two. Okay. So if I divide that by the money I'm in, in for, just cash flow, we're not talking about the appreciation, we're not talking about mortgage pay down, but just cash flow, if I divide this by this, what do I get? 12%. 12%. So you're making 12% just on cash flow alone. That's true. Wow. And, and this uh, property, you said the new, uh, the new price was 275? 275. So 275 in that area, very conservatively, Anil, what is it? What's the growth? What's the appreciation very conservatively? Yeah, we take about 3%. 3%. Yeah. So again, just on that, you're making about eight, nine thousand dollars. Yeah, eight thousand two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay, so eight thousand two fifty. And um, we're not uh, we're not um, uh, looking even at debt reduction, but we can see how you're generating 25, 30, 35% returns, um, getting great cash flow, um, and you have 103 property, and there's no stopping you. That's true. Yes. Now, the other thing that you've taught me, I mean, you, 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 you speak on um, uh, 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 infinite banking concept, you speak, um, you, you know, you look at that, you... Uh, you, you look at um, a stock, stock options. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, this is your bread and butter. This is your niche. You're amazing at doing this. What is your uh, thoughts on stocks, stock options? I mean, we've all kind of taken a hit with great companies in the last year or two. Um, but as long as you hold, my thinking is, you know, the good companies, the Amazon, the Microsofts, the Walmarts, in my personal opinion, they all come, kind of come back, but what are your thoughts on stocks versus real estate? Because I know you do both. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the uh, uh, stock options is also good uh, uh, if if you know if if you know what you are doing, and uh, they you can make you know easily 20, 25 percent return in stock options. But in stock options, you have to put in a lot of effort. The real estate is uh, it's a it's a Passive income. Once you are on the you know vehicle, it just goes on. You know, like uh, last year uh, when I uh, uh, came for the interview, my total portfolio was worth 23 million, and now it it became 30 million. So two years without doing any work, I mean we are just managing the property managers, so the value goes up. Whereas in stocks, in stock options. You got to put in some effort uh, on daily basis and uh, be on top of the world. And but, now, uh, stock option is a good uh, is one of the you know nice way to make money. And now time flies when I'm having fun when I'm being educated. Uh, thank you so so much for being on the show with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rav. It's a pleasure for me to be on your show. And thank you guys for watching. Without you, we would not have a show. If you want to see this show again or you want to see any of our other shows, make sure you go to everydayinvestor.com. Um, you can watch them there. Click on episodes. It's like watching on demand. Make sure you also uh, sign up to receive the episodes right into your inbox. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique, ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today, Canada's mortgage choice.